Are you sick and tired of wrestlers having garbage indie matches where they do flips and dives and other meaningless stuff? Are you sick, tired, and frustrated with the matches making any sense? Are you sick and tired of people booking goofy segments on shows that are supposed to be sports-based? <clears throat> uh, Tony Khan, I'm talking to you, buddy. Are you sick and tired of the rules not making sense, including the fact the referee's not enforcing them properly? Are you tired of people reciting scripted, phony verbiage on WWE television? Well, if you're sick and tired of these things, if you like a good wrestling match, do you like the wrestling shows or, pro or programs, depending on the way that you view them, having logic? Then, then you, you ha have, have come, come to the, to the right, right place. place. This is Wrestling and Logic, where we review wrestling on a weekly basis. Uh, they don't need all these gimmicks in the. Where we have an abundance of, ras of rants. Especially for me. Fuck off. <laughs> Where is the logic in this? And we have memorable moments pretty much every week. You can listen to these podcasts every Saturday morning on YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and all other podcast platform this is wrestling and logic with your host habanator and his guest host uh joshua james jenkins otherwise known as triple j and that is why this is called the r and l podcast hey guys habanator here and today we're back with another episode of wrestling and logic and this is the Wrestlemania edition of Wrestling and Logic. The big one, possibly the biggest episode we've ever done. And Unfo yeah, you, you hear that right, the biggest yeah. episode we ever done. And unfortunately, Cabinator. I announced on Twitter that Josh will not be with us for the next three months. Three months uh, from set from three months from uh, whenever you hear this, uh, the 17th of April, Josh will return on the July 17th episode uh, where we will have the Wrestling Community Part 2 rant. Uh, it's going to be a big one. We were supposed to do it next week, but then uh, Josh had to back out, and we can't do it without him. He's the one who wants to do it the most. So... But at least we we're here to do WrestleMania for you guys. So yeah, but first we're gonna guys. we're gonna talk about some stuff. <sighs> have, have you heard about the people that have been released by the WWE? Uh, it's a whole bunch of people, nine people in total. The whole. I, I thought it was funny. I thought it was. 40 they said 20 wrestlers wow there might be more but the ones that have been released so far is samoa joe which one which was uh one that i was most surprised about um mickey james uh the iconics billy k and peyton royce get the fuck out they deserve it <laughs> well some of us may well, not have liked him but Losing a job is never a nice thing. So I know, I yeah. know, but I I know, but what the fuck was they doing to them? This might as well be, might as well be a good thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chelsea Green, which I was also surprised about because they were just about to debut her on SmackDown. Uh, they were gonna uh, debut her over on SmackDown and uh, she got injured a few months she actually did debut on SmackDown but then she got um, injured so she couldn't wrestle and now she had to 
sit on the sidelines the whole time and do nothing. Now she's gone. And Bo Dallas, they released him. Blake, Wesley Blake, they released him as well. Tucker, they got rid of him. Oh, Tucker! And Kalisto, uh, the, all those guys have been released. Some of them may be happy that they've been released, but some of them... Tucker. Yeah, Tucker actually uh, got a bit excited now that he got released. I don't he said something about that he's gonna uh, tell us he a whole something about freedom freedom is mine i'm gonna go take myself somewhere else like he said he said something about freedom he's mad happy about it yeah yeah that that's pretty crazy and it was unnecessary and this happened exactly a year ago on april the 15th a, a whole lot more people were released and are much bigger names and people were mad about that uh, they weren't really mad they were just sad uh, that all these people lost their jobs that was when the pandemic first hit us uh, like in April last year so yeah I don't think they needed to do this they they keep making an excuse that they're losing money but they're really not they made a record year last year uh, didn't when didn't they make like two billion dollars last year or something uh, yeah and they've got that new peacock deal with, with a whole lot of money and they have to go and throw out all these guys when they didn't need to uh, so yeah what do you think they're about dicks. this they're pre pretty much dicks if you think about it yeah this it, it, it is and i and i read i read something too it was it was i think it was john Laurinaitis who who had who handpicked them who handpicked the competitors who who released it but it wasn't his fault it's all vince mcmahon's fault it's yeah. not his it's not his fault it just sucks it really sucks yeah oh like, anyway that, that should have happened i don't i i i wanted them to leave for the sake of getting booked better because this is actually if you think about it pretty good because spread the damn talent and not not sit them in either titus k ring or end up commentating in the ring did they need did they, they need to spread the talent and spread spread them wisely make them go don't, don't let first of all i'm not saying they can go to aew get you get mm -hmm. hell no no hell no but again whatever the hell they was doing was not good so i don't blame them yes. i don't some of them probably wanted to get released so good on them yeah. But but for the people who might not find a job, I'm sorry for them. Yeah. What in the world is going on with Evilise lately? Uh, uh, wait, what? <laughs> she's apparently she's been having attitude problems, and AEW uh, got rid of her because she <laughs> she no sold um. A uh, headlock from Thunder Rosa, and I uh, kept oh, complaining. Oh, yeah, and she wh was whining on oh, Twitter. She was whining on Twitter about how she's being mistreated. I don't know what the full story is, but I don't know. Uh, something needs to happen over there at, at AEW. I don't know what they need to do. I mean, look, look. First of all, let me tell you something real good, and that's probably going to be disrespectful for to her. But I forgot who the hell she even was in the fucking first place. So, whatever I have to say about her, uh, I got nothing to say. Uh, you do, you do, you Cabo. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's really uh, it's just 
s silly when these people just come on the shows and they're mad at somebody and they no sell they completely shit all over the business and make it look fake just because they're mad at somebody Austin Aries did the same thing a few years ago uh, John Morrison beat him and uh, he got up he nipped up and that was pretty stupid as well well but Austin Aries is always mad about something Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, you know what? I don't know. Yeah. So that's all the news we've got. So that was pretty short. But anyway, we're nine minutes um, into this thing. You guys came for WrestleMania, and that's what we're gonna give you. So. WrestleMania. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Quit fuck. Quit. Quit. Quit fucking stalling, Kello. Cut that out. Okay, I'm trying it. People doesn't like. People doesn't like stalling. Yeah. Especially, especially from a main host. Yeah. So Vince McMahon introduced us to the program. He he, he talked about. Also, uh, disclaimer, we're going to be reviewing both nights yes, in this bo video. Yes, both nights. I don't think the reviews will be that long because I didn't take that many notes. Um, wow, really, man? Yeah, I it was just like, it's two nights of see, wrestling. See, our main host is slacking. You see that? <laughs> two, it's two nights of wrestling. It would have uh, taken me till Saturday if I took lots of notes. Uh, <clears throat> So Vince McMahon uh, introduced us to the program and he had a nice speech about how there was something missing from WWE and that was the fans and they finally got to bring back fans in the arenas. Not that many though, there were only like 25,000 people in the stadium, in Raymond James Stadium where they had WrestleMania. And and, 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 and and the rest of them was just fucking cardboard cutouts. So I didn't see any cardboard cutouts anyway. It was it was on it was it was like on top of the stadium. Oh, yeah. There there was like a big like LED screen on the top of the stadium that said uh, like WrestleMania and all that stuff. Uh, it was, cool, it was pretty cool. I think it's special effects or something. Took me almost a whole week to watch this though. Uh, I literally just finished it, watching it right now. Uh, so he was talking about how uh, the wrestlers have worked hard to give everybody entertainment and that he's happy the fans are back and it was quite good it was welcome to wrestlemania i kind of felt the energy from that to be honest yeah and now especially we have way, especially the way that fucking old man said it and now we have a new open for wwe programming instead of it saying then now forever it now says then, then now now together, together forever. forever yeah pretty pretty sweet yeah to be it's honest. quite cool and then we have a celebrity baby rex has seen america the beautiful is that your national anthem or something yeah oh okay yeah. america and american the national anthem Oh. I'm not singing it, by the way. Enough fuck out of here. You'll be here all day long. <laughs> yeah. so. And then we have a cold open for WrestleMania. It was a bit goofy, man. It's like they're trying to be. Too. They're trying to be funny. I didn't really like it that much, but uh, everything else was fine. And then Michael Cole introduced us to the. 
the program. There was a lightning and rainstorm in Tampa Bay. Tampa, I keep saying Tampa Bay, uh, Tampa Bay, Florida, where this pay per view Tampa, took place. Cab, Tampa Bay, the ca Cabinator 2021 people. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the people watching Tampa. Yeah. And they had to delay the show. And then we had. Raw correspondent Sarah Schreiber interviewing Shane McMahon. It's probably about his steel cage match against Braun Strowman, which was actually not bad for what it was. Uh, Fuck, it sucked. <laughs> yeah, the the feud is, was dumb. Is how, oh, but we'll we'll get there when you get there. I actually actually because of that, I think I think I turn off show and stop and wait until tomorrow to watch on Wednesday. Oh, okay. I didn't fucking suck. Yeah. I didn't I didn't uh fast forward through it. I just stopped when I saw Bobby Lashley appearing and he and MVP is cutting a promo about how he's gonna beat Bobby Lashley's gonna beat Drew McIntyre and then Bobby Lashley, he's standing there. He looks intimidating. It's like, <sighs> and he's gonna beat somebody up and gouge their eyeballs dance. out and eat them. I I love when Bobby Lashley has those facial expressions. And where am I? Uh, and there I said uh, he looks like he's gonna gouge Drew McIntyre's eyeballs out and eat them and then enter Drew McIntyre he starts squaring up to Lashley and then a uh, referee one of the referees that girl referee on Smackdown Jessica Carr came out to escort him and MV, uh, Lashley and MVP out of the arena and then the interview continued from there and I didn't really care so yeah now we have the first match the WWE Championship before the WWE Championship Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre the video package highlighting the build up to this match played and it wasn't bad what are you doing? Are you playing on your iPad or something? No, but you know you scream with black. Well, what's going on there? I hear an ad playing. Uh, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I was playing my iPad. <laughs> okay. Well, you, you tell me I'm slacking when you're playing iPad on. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah, I had a long day. I had to play games all day. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> and then Ty Mr. Call of Duty Mobile. Titus O'Neil and Hulk Hogan appeared and I fast forwarded because I don't care. And then Drew McIntyre for the first time in over a year came out in front of all the fans. It, it was so epic to see the guys coming out to the fans and the fans are cheering yay and we get to see real fans day real live fans uh, at, at the uh, stadium and then uh, <clears throat> where am I and then Bobby Lashley came out here and he's the champion Josh would be happy about this because he has a very strict rule that he, he he will get mad if the champion comes out first. And, and yeah. And, yeah it's, never mind, it's fine. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to that. You, you stop skipping ahead, Cabo. You're saying I'm slacking. Yeah. So now, Bobby Lash, Greg Hamilton weighed in the wrestlers. There's two different ones. There's Greg Hamilton and Mike Rome. Which, 
is Greg Hamilton the the, the little um, big one, the one that says challenger? Uh, no, I think it's Mike Rome. I yeah. think that's Mike Rome. Isn't Mike Rome the uh, the one that has a spiky hair or something? Yeah, that, that might be Greg then. Okay, I I don't know which ones these are. Uh, they're all the they're all the same. Shut up. <laughs> they're all the same. Uh, they had a nice fight at the beginning, and then they went to the outside. And I'm like, come on, it's the first match, and you already go on the outside. They get back in the ring. Uh, they throw some really not really good looking punches. <laughs> it started to pick up, and then uh, Bobby hit a really nice move. I don't know what it was. <laughs> um, and then he hit a choke slam for a two count. And then Michael Cole botched on commentary. And instead of saying Drew McIntyre, he called him Joe McIntyre. Uh, which was actually quite funny. And then <laughs> Drew McIntyre hit three future, future shock DDTs on Lashley for a two count. I don't know why he had to do so many and not beat him with it. Uh, and then to avoid being decapitated by Drew McIntyre's Claymore kick, Bobby Lashley evade and slither out of the ring onto the outside floor. McIntyre did a dive for a quite a big pop and that was nice. That, you see, that's a dive done properly. These guys on AEW, they keep, even in WWE, they keep just jumping and just crickets after that. Uh, this is actually a dive done at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, Drew tried to do a top rope move, and, but then Lashley counted and tried to put him in the hurt lock. Drew tried to claim more kick again, but then he missed, and Lashley put him in a, the hurt lock, and the people went crazy. Oh, come on, Drew, you can do it. And somebody sent a message, you can do it. And imagine that. People are cheering for a, a, a submission hold. And not some stupid, uh, crazy spot or something. What spot? I see no spot. It's yeah, it, it's it. It's good because everybody uh, like does it. So anyway, and then McIntyre passed out for the retention of Bobby Lashley's WWE Championship. And then I note, and then I noticed that almost all of the champions in WWE are black, which is a good thing, because uh, you know how I was going to say something. I was going to say something, but I don't know. If I should just <laughs> you know, because black. Welcome to WWE, Black Old Mania. Okay, so, yeah. Okay. I, so, I, I get it because every almost every champion is a black man besides I, our new, new, which I'm not going to spoil. Shut up. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I, and I don't know what I don't know what you can say about Roman. Oh uh, well, Roman is not really black. Uh, he's Samoan. Uh, and I guess you could say he's a person of color. So well. Mm, He's not, he's white, but he's a uh, Samoan. Uh, but there are barely any white American guys that are champions. Uh, or. <coughs> Wait. <coughs> I thought Nia Jax was American, but she's Samoan also. And everyone. They, so there are no. White Americans that are champions in WWE. 
Oh, also, Nia Jax, Nia Jax can go fuck herself. I'm pissed off for of what she did on Monday. What? Um, what? What did she do? So they was they was making a fun they was making a fun they was making fun of the fact that Manny Rose fell and slipped at WrestleMania. Yeah, like dumbass. And then and then she was and then uh, and then during the match when they was fighting her because they pushed her, uh, she was trying to get on the rope and Nia Jax fell on her ass again <laughs> on ringside. <laughs> she didn't yell out my hole. Karma. But she, but she fell. Oh, she slipped from the ringside, fell on her ass, and, and Mandy Rose had a good, good, very ha 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 laugh. <laughs> She actually got counted out. And she actually counted herself out on purpose to laugh. <laughs> oh yeah, I re I remember you were ang you were angry about that. Oh, uh, what did I do now? Okay, I think we're we're, we're gonna have some bad frame drops because I've got ten warnings. Said, let me just see. Real bad. Uh, anyway, Robert, what the hell are you doing? Titus O'Neil and the NWO are backstage. I would have fast forwarded, but I only watched because Bailey was there, and she's actually really, really entertaining. You know who she reminds me of? Okay, go ahead, say the, the MJF. She's like a female version of MJF to me, like a smart. I don't know if I want to. I don't know if you want to go heel, there. I, I, I think she's one of the best heels in the business, and she's always entertaining to watch. I, 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 she's been great as a heel. I really like Bailey. And she's very good in the ring. One of the best in the ring. And, and then, speaking of Nia Jax, the uh, winners of this match got a shot at the women's tag team champion, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. The women's tag team, Tomoa, and Natalia and Tamina won. Mandy Rose slipped on her entrance. Yeah, I didn't watch this. And then an ad of <laughs> WWE superstars telling Americans to get vaccinated, please. And hopefully we will get to do the same thing. Because uh, I just want this whole pandemic to end. And then... My dad, my dad... I want to send you my dad. My dad also got vaccinated oh. on Friday or on on Thursday. On I think Thursday, my dad got vaccinated on Thursday. Cool. And and that because he had COVID before. Oh, that, but, that that's that's quite shocking. Um, true. But, but I hope. But I really, but I really, really hope every everybody gets better and. I, and but I hope everyone gets better, and I'm glad Drew Macin Drew McIntyre and Titus O'Neil and Titus O'Neil and other do other Titus catering people telling us to get vaccinated. I really appreciate that from WWE. Yeah, that, that, that's good of them to do that. And then uh, we have another goofy Old Spice ad with. The salesman Joe Average. Shut up. I finally Go found there. out his bullshit. Shut up, Gabby. Yeah, let's no, just let's talk about that. Fuck get out, out of this. Uh, Fake fucking foolishness. Yeah, it's not wrestling. Get out of here. And then we have the third match: Seth Rollins versus Cesaro. And then Seth Rollins came out. Uh. I think he still had his burn it down music on. No, he had different music. Oh, really? Uh, well, I didn't he hear. Had, okay. He had like, he had like different music. It was kind of a mixture of his heel theme and his old theme. It's, it's it was kind of a mixture of that. It was fucking great. It was really, it was really good. Okay. And it kept saying, and it kept saying burn it down in like the middle parts of his theme. It was pretty. It was pretty de decent. Okay. And Cesaro, then, on the other hand, 
It, he's still the same. Bo he's still the same dude. Changed nothing changed. <laughs> yeah, and then Vince, nothing changed. A video package in the style of an ad plays. I I didn't like this. It it was uh, it was creative, but it was goofy, and the whole thing has been goofy. Seriously, why would they be feuding over uh, Cesaro swinging? Seth Rollins around 22 times. Now, come on. And then Cesaro came out. The bell rang. The match started. And Cesaro right away uh, hit. I think I meant to say Seth Rollins with a European uppercut. I love when he does that. And also when he uh, jumps on that. Uh, on the middle rope and does that. European uppercut, that's great as well. And this was a good match. Um, I, uh, I really liked it, and especially at the end. Oh, I didn't ask you your thoughts about Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre. What do you think about that? Who, me? Yeah. Wait, oh, who, me? Who else is here? Um, uh, it was pretty. It was pretty deep. It was pretty deep. It was pretty. It was pretty decent. The fact that the the crowd the crowd actually got me into the match because they was at, they was actually che cheering on, and la and, and you know last year's been booked like like a beast. He's not he he's not been booked great so far because they keep breaking because Vince keeps breaking up tag teams, but. You know, it, it was a it was a decent match. I'll give it I'll, I'll give it a I'll give it I'll give it a seven. Oh, Drew try, Drew tried to fight, but he of course we knew he was gonna lose because they wouldn't take the belt off of Ashley. Yeah, too and, early. And I and I gave that match uh, wrestling eight point five and logic a seven. And then. Anyway, with Cesaro, I also liked at the end where he had him on his shoulder and swung him around and dropped him and beat him with that. And it gave Cesaro his WrestleMania moment and hopefully he'll go on to do bigger things. Maybe even he'll even go for Roman Reigns one day. I think, no, I think he's not ready. I think it's maybe... A damn break, man. Maybe it's... Explain how... Explain how he's pull some pull, pull that out of your ass and explain me how the fuck he's ready for Rome. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then maybe hey, on, maybe Biggie. A lot of people are speculating that. No, he, he can wait for Biggie. Can also wait for like a few years. He is definitely booked right now. He needs to be. He needs to be booked series. He needs to stop gyrating. He needs to be. He, you know, he needs to be booked like. For that, I think he book he book like like a baby face version of Biggie Langston. N n not this shit. Not this. Not this. Yeah, hold up. Not this shit. He needs. He needs to just. He, he needs to. He need. No, no offense, Biggie, but he needs to grow up. He needs to grow up. Like, come on, man. Like, what? What is he doing? He's gone from the new day. He's still fucking shaking his. He's still shaking and humping the fucking ring. Don't stuff that Corey. Stop. Stop. Anyway, um, <laughs> you don't see, you don't agree with me. You have to move on from that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. The wall find somebody to go against. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Roman Reigns, uh, and then uh, the fourth match on this. For the Raw Tag Team Championships, a new day, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods, the champions, versus AJ Styles and Omos. New Day comes out and then AJ and Omos followed them. The bell rang and the match started with AJ and Kofi starting out. Kofi illegally tagged himself in. He didn't hold the tag rope. And then I invoked the Josh rule, where if someone makes an illegal tag, I will fast forward through the whole match. Normally, I wouldn't 
do that, but I just don't really care about this. And then AJ Styles and Omos became the new Raw Tag Team Champions. So there is one white American guy that has a championship, and that's AJ Styles. And then wrestling zero and logic zero. That doesn't mean it's bad. I didn't see enough of it to say whether it was good or not. Did you watch this? No, I didn't know. I, no, I, I didn't give two shits. I already knew who won because that dude, because because that big that fucking dude was a big ass black man right there. So I knew he was gonna win in the first place. Yeah. First of all, he didn't even do nothing. He he didn't even do nothing. I don't even think he could have fucking wrestled if he had the fucking guts. Like what? What did he do? A backbreaker? Give me a fucking break. Give me a break. You think you need and you think I'm gonna watch that match? Oh, so then this yeah, I, I, yeah, I know I'm shitting on everything, but hey, guess what? It's not, it's not guess what? It's not my fault. This thing is illogical. Blame Bruce, bring Vince, bring the beaver, not me. And then the match five, the steel cage match. With Braun Strowman versus Shane McMahon, a view video package of the build-up to this match played. Uh, they've been doing all this, pouring slime on each other, hopscotch, exposing Fucking Braun terrible. Strowman's Great what Five what report, yeah. all because Shane called him stupid, which is like calling a kettle black. Uh, you know what, Braun could have just punched him in the face and finished it right there and we wouldn't have to watch all this. And then Shane McMahon came out to the ring and then Braun Strowman came out and Elias and Jackson Riker jump-started the match by attacking Braun with a steel chair. Now Braun Strowman finally got in the ring and the match started. Shane whacked Braun with a steel chair, but then he got rid of it. Sorry. Hello? Yes, I'm good. Uh, Burger King, please. Uh, Whopper, please. All right. My dad called me in the middle of a <laughs> podcast. That's a moment for you right there. What are you doing? What the hell? Oh my god. I'm fucking professional. <laughs> Our main host is unprofessional. Look at this guy. Look at this guy, bro. Call me, you know. It was my dad. Yeah, no, I can't you letting people call you in the middle of a dead podcast. What is wrong with you, bro? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> retard. Oh, what? Excuse me. What did you say? <laughs> Nothing. I, I, you say that one more time. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that shit, dude. Don't say that. How? Yeah. Why? Because it's bad. It's, uh... What? Because it's bad. You know what else is bad? What? G getting called in the middle of a damn podcast. That's bad. Yeah. It's all funny. Yeah. And then uh, Shane is good at being a chicken shit heel and running away from Strowman. He can do some nice kicks as well. I guess he was trained for MMA. He's almost 50 and he can go in there. And then he continuously tried to escape the cage, but then Braun kept bringing him down. He tried one more time, but then Braun pulled him down, but then luckily Shane pulled off a piece of sheet metal and whacked Braun Strowman with it. And then Shane tried to pin Braun Strowman, but then Braun kicked out and Shane oversold it. He crawled through the door 
and but Braun pulled him back in. He's treating Shane like a sandbag, just beating him and throwing him around. Imagine if he was the monster among men and you could actually get behind him instead of a bald, uh, silly looking guy. What? And then uh, Shane made a comeback by ramming Braun's shoulder into the cage. He hit a DDT and then he hit a nice coast to coast on Braun Strowman. And then Shane Stooges tried to climb up the cage. He tried. They tried to help Shane out the cage, but then Braun Strowman ran into the fence and forced them off the cage. And Shane McMahon tried to escape again, but then. Braun Strowman uh, tried to pull him back down. Shane hit Braun with a garbage can positioned on the top of the cage. I wonder how that got there. There's four of them, by the way. And then Shane McMahon's on the outside of the cage and tried to wave Braun goodbye. But then Braun grabbed his hand and That's tore and tore the cage fence off and pulled Shane McMahon in and then Braun Strowman yelled who's stupid now and threw Shane McMahon off the cage I and, feel stupid watching this fucking match and then he hit Shane with a running on. power slam for the win wrestling I gave it I originally gave it a 4.5, but I feel like I was being a bit harsh. So I'll give it a 6.75 out of 10. And logic a 0, because this feud was garbage. And then, while he's about... How did you like that? How did you like that, bro? I the like only good dude. spot in that match was the only good spot in that match was was Braun ripping, peeling the fucking cage off and grabbing Shane from there. That was the only good spot. Yeah. That's that was the only, uh, other other than other than that. Cabo has lost his mind today. Yeah, that, match know, was terrible. Know, man. that match was bad. I, I mean, I was that match was. The, the, the feel the, the, the feel felt like I was watching Nickelodeon. It was fucking terrible. Yeah. Fuck out of here, bro. Yeah. I'm done. And then, while he's about to hand over to the Hall of Flame, Hall of Flame, Hall of Fame oh. class, <laughs> Hall of Fame class of 2020, <laughs> Bailey interrupt Michael Cole and called him a little idiot. That's a little bit harsh, but same time, Michael that's Cole like is a fucking idiot. that's like calling a kettle black. And but Michael Cole is a fucking idiot. Remember, remember what he said, Joe McIntyre. Yeah. <laughs> remember that, and all the other fucking botches he done. Remember that. Yeah, and then she made us watch a video package of. All the 2020 Hall of Fame inductees, and it was a good package. All the Hall of Fame class of 2020 I inductees are introduced on the stage. Yes, it was JBL, um, or was that this year? I think that was this year. I think it, it was this. It was this year. Oh, oh I, I, I don't remember anybody else in, in on the because i didn't take down the names then, um it was i'll give you the things i remember so far it was who, who was it jbl rob van dam the nwo kane molly holly in 2020 it was a writ I think they gave it to someone else. It was originally supposed to be P Batista, but he turned it down because he's waiting to have. He wants. He wants to be inducted. Get the fucking fans in. Um, and it it was Kane, Eric Bischoff, mm. William Shatner, Ozzy Osbourne, Rich Herring, Titus O'Neil with the Titus O'Neil and Rich Herring with the 2020 and 2021 Warrior Award. Um. Yeah. Who, who else? 
they that that they that was that was it. Yeah. Oh, uh, Ozzy Osbourne and and the last one I remember was the Great Khali. Oh, jeez, I'm going to buy him. I don't, I don't fucking know. And what the fuck did he earn that for? I don't know. India. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, they replaced Bautista with the great Kali. What is that? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And then WrestleMania. We had a ad that showed... Oh, Steve. and the Bella Twins. Yeah. There you go. This is what it is. And then uh, WrestleMania 38 was announced to return... To the AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Arlington, Texas, next year in April. I and remember that back in 2016, they 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 they, they, they was at the, there for WrestleMania 32. Also, uh, one of the worst WrestleManias of all time. Fuck out of here! With that. And, and if you guys want to fight me on it, fight me on it. I will fucking win. The mat, that 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 was that was a bad that was a bad WrestleMania. Okay. Yeah. And then we have a guest commentator Booker T joining the commentary team. And then we had people, grown adults, dressed up as bunnies jumping on the stage. Uh, they're hopping to the ring and then one of their ears fell off which was the only good thing about that and then that was apparently for the Miz and John Morrison versus Bad Bunny and Damien Priest Miz and Morrison came out with the bunnies a video package played and I fast forwarded through that Damien Priest came out and then Bad Bunny came out with uh, on top of a truck which was actually quite impressive and then the match started and Damien Priest tagged out to Bad Bunny and guess what Bad Bunny what? was holding the tag rope Josh would have been quite happy with that the fact that a celebrity can hold a tag rope. I'm gonna tell, tell you something. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna give you my. I, I, I wasn't. Look, I didn't expect jack. No, I expect nothing from that money. I expected a fucking bad trash match. But to be honest, that money was not was actually not bad. He actually impressed me for for, for a little bit. Yeah. And, and Josh would have been yeah, quite happy with Bad Bunny holding the tag rope. The fact that he can. Hold a tag rope and not a fourteen times. Because Bad Bunny is a fucking wrestling is a wrestling fan. He knows what the fuck to do. And and cer and a certain fourteen time world champion doesn't hold bad, the rope when he gets tagged. What you gotta say about that? A bad bad a whole celebrity rapper. Who I bet probably does, probably barely know. Who I probably wish you know. Probably know who doesn't know how to wrestle. Knows how to hold a damn rope, Randall. Fuck yeah, and Josh Jenkins actually went crazy one day. I was sitting in a restaurant, and then it was half past two in the afternoon. We were about to eat our meal, and then all of a sudden, I see on Discord, Randy Orton. <laughs> and then I was uh, I was trying so hard not to laugh in the restaurant. I was like, <laughs> and I was I was even trying not to smile in front of my parents because if they saw me, luckily I had a mask on, so they couldn't see me smiling. Uh, I was like, what the fuck was going on? <laughs> yeah, and then... <laughs> I was confused as all fucking hell. And then the uh, judge was like, This guy, this Kakazoli ass sucker didn't hold the tag rope when he tagged in all of the Triple H or whoever was in that match. And he went crazy. And then he said, and then he said, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you suck my dick, Randy, you fucking scumbag. Like, oh I'm my like, oh. gosh. 
You can go you on my legendary this dude is. You can go on my Instagram to see that whole rant. It was hilarious. <laughs> uh, oh man. Oh, but we might not get uh, promos like that from him. And now that he's going to try to be more calmer. Yeah. And then uh bad, miss the old dude. Bad Bunny did some nice stuff and almost he was almost as good as people on Twitter were saying he is. Miz led him as well. These guys did some nice stuff and I enjoyed it. The people were going crazy. And then Bad Bunny at the end and Damon Priest hit oh yeah, I in the middle of the match, uh, Damian Priest uh, got tagged in and then he made this really nice comeback where he was beating up Miz and Morrison and, and he was destroying them and going crazy on them. And then, um, yeah, and they hit a crossbody and powerbomb combination for the win. And wrestling, I gave a seven, logic a four. We get shown a recap of Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre. And, mm -hmm. Ah, people, you people out there, I'm so, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Bro, what is going on with you? I'm, what's going on with you, bro? This happening? Discord uh, just crashed out of nowhere for no reason. Wait, did it, is it still recording? Yeah, it's still recording, but there was a, a botch. Uh, bro, come on. <laughs> yeah. You're becoming worse than Mandy Rose, man. Stop it, bro. Yeah. And then they previewed night two just before we had our main event the smackdown women's championship match with sasha banks the champion versus bianca it wasn't Bele. technically the main event that was the co-main event yeah so sort of <laughs> josh said the exact same thing and people came on him on twitter and wow come at me come at me i don't yeah. give a fuck Come at me. <laughs> yeah. And then a video package played, and it was really, really good. It made the bad booking look palatable. Bianca Bele came out to a standing ovation, and then Sasha, the champion, came out. Mike Rome weighed in and introduced a wrestler. And did you notice that uh, Sasha Banks has a smaller belt? Uh, for design for her because her waist is no, I know it's that yeah it, it is the, the championship usually that small uh, yeah uh, anyway and then the match was going on and I was like so far this match is pretty good I think this was match of the night in my opinion and what is rel sucker doing over there i i was i i, I won the game sorry <laughs> oh okay. and then <laughs> sasha banks was working quite good as a heel and then bianca was showing her strength and lifting sasha banks and it was a good really really good match so far and then uh there was more stuff there was a spot where um uh bianca Belair tried to power bomb sasha banks but then she uh flopped her on her face and i'm not sure exactly how to describe it and then she also did a really cool looking tornado ddt Bianca Bele also did some great stuff, lifting up Sasha Banks, yep. slamming her down, 
all that stuff. And then <laughs> Bianca hit a KOD for the win. And she is now the new SmackDown Women's Champion. And Michael Cole actually botched this. And and oh she said that... No, and he, fire Michael Cole, bro. He, he, he ruined the whole thing. He said that he, Sasha Banks kicked out. But when Bianca actually uh, w beat Sasha Banks... That fuck, fuck him! Fire he him, he this, ruined this the whole thing. Nigga, but, what? What is he saying? What? I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done with Michael Cole, bro. Michael Cole needs to fucking retire. He's growing gray hairs. He's turned to he's turned to Grandpa Cole. He needs to sh he needs to shut the fuck up and get the fuck out of the fucking arenas now. He yeah. needs to stop. Yeah. And so wrestling, I gave a 10 and logic a 9. And that closed night one of WrestleMania 37. So the overall rating of night one, I gave wrestling a 7 and logic 7. And now night two. And then we have Ashland Craft, who I've never heard of, singing. Who, I don't know, who the fuck is that? <laughs> singing the american national anthem and then we have the goofy cold open again and then we have the host of wrestlemania uh th 37 titus o'neill and hulk hogan in pirate suits which was also goofy and then now they Which was, was um, the also I would like to mention that I laughed at that part they was fucking pretending to be fucking pirates. That was actually yeah. funny. And this is the goofiest part of them all. The first match, Randy Orton <laughs> versus the Fiend with Alexa Bliss. <laughs> Randy Orton came out and Randy Orton has this trend of just walking so slowly out to the ring and just letting his theme song go on the whole time and then they just have to loop it so that it doesn't just end right there uh, you know the fuck it you know you know his fucking entrance went longer than the fucking match that's fucking terrible bro yeah it's 12 minutes on the entrances alone the fuck <laughs> Twelve minutes for that. For that. And then a video package played, which was, I would, I would say the same things about this as I said, and in the fast lane review, it was dumb. It was not uh, funny. It wasn't cool. It wasn't interesting. It was goofy and stupid. And then um, Alexa Bliss came out. And what really just frustrates me is that she's coming out to these, this children's music and Randy Orton just standing there with a straight face. With a straight face. How is he? I was like, like, bro, come on. How is he not just cringing at this? I, wasn't, I actually laughed at that. <laughs> it this actually wasn't as bad as last time. And then the fiend came out in a jack in a box, and then he he was when he was coming out of the jack in in the box, he was walking. Uh, he was in his burnt form, and then he tr magically transformed into the fiend. This is what makes me hate the fiend. All this supernatural, unrealistic bullshit. I, I can't stand it. I really can't. The, and then the fiend jump-started the match with a jumping clothesline off the jack in the box, which was the only good thing about this match. I fast forward, uh, the red, why do they always have the red for the Fiends matches? 
They always do that. So then I fast forwarded through the whole match until I saw Alexa's face covered in a black substance. Uh, uh, the people are speculating that Alistair Black is going to be part of this. And I really don't want him to. I actually like Alistair Why? Black. Why? And I don't. Who's think, doing that? Who's reporting bullshit? Who? I don't Who? know. It's all the fans. They're coming up with all these conspiracy theories. And <laughs> Conspiracy theories. And then somebody said it was Alistair Black. I heard, a couple, I heard only a couple of. Bo Dallas rumors, but that's not the case anymore because he's gone. Yeah, so yeah. The, and so people and uh, Randy Orton beat the Fiend, and people are going uh, all mad because they think the Fiend is buried. Well, uh, he's really just a garbage character. Uh, it's it's so like stupid. I, <sighs> at least it's over. Wrestling zero, logic zero. This wasn't <laughs> even wrestling. This was fucking bullshit theater. Bullshit ba theater. Bailey is back for another segment with Tyler, Titus O'Neil, Hulk Hogan, and Eric Bischoff. She wants them to join her on Ding Dong Hello. They instead uh, say some stuff to uh, and Titus O'Neil gave her a pirate hat and she threw it on the ground. And then we had the women's tag team for the women's tag team championship: Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax, the champions, versus Natalia and Tamina. I fast forwarded through all of this and I didn't watch it. And now we have the third match. Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn with Logan Paul. I forgot to say Paul in there. There we go. That should be better. That's to blow my nose. I apologize. Yeah. A video package played. I, I like Sami Zayn as a chicken shit heel but it's still a little goofy uh sammy zane came out and later announced logan paul this was this was all right as a match uh, they did some nice stuff uh, uh what's his name uh, kevin owens did this nice superplex on sammy zane and it actually looked really good i liked it it and uh, but uh, Kevin Owens actually won. I didn't expect him to win at all. And then after, uh, what? Uh, after Logan Paul came in the ring, and then Kevin Owens gave him a stunner. And yeah, that happened. So wrestling six, logic three. And then I was I, I the only the only thing I like was Kevin Owens stunning Logan Paul. Yeah. And but 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 but, but, but I'll give one, I'll give it one thing. People kept look, people kept looking over uh, over that Logan Paul was in the match and not actually caring not actually caring about about Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn themselves when that but the Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn match was actually was actually fucking fantastic in my opinion. Wow, okay. So people kept over people kept overlooking Loki, Loki overlooking Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens all because Logan Paul was there. Everyone kept making memes out of him, fucking like like the one I posted on my stories on Instagram when Logan, oh, Paul, man, man. Logan they was comparing Logan Paul with KSI. Then and Sami Zayn was dancing. Uh, he that was my my dad actually fucking laughed his ass off right from that. Oh. He's a Sammy. He's a big Sammy. He's a Sammy Zane guy. Oh, okay. But, but, but people kept overlooking the fact that Kevin Owens and Sammy Zane didn't even happen when they they keep make calling Logan Paul Boogan Paul. <clears throat> but the fan, the math was fantastic. Yeah. And yes, Boogan Paul. Like, ugh. And then but we I'll have. Give, I'll give it a eight point six out of ten. 
Okay, okay. And then we had the for the United States Championship, Riddle, the champion versus Sheamus. Also a great match. Okay, uh, Sheamus came out, a video package played. I, I didn't care about any of this. And Matt Riddle came out, he did the uh, kicking off his uh, flip flops and then birds also, flew I, I'm also, I on asked, the screen. I say something here. Why are you fucking doing this, Vince McMahon? What is what is wrong with you? Why you what? You try to turn this dude to a fucking comedy act? Why are birds flying out of my screen? What is going on here? And one why, of them. I'm not I am not trying to watch Rio. Instead of W, why why am I looking at birds flying out of my screen? Matt Riddle kicks his shoes and please take off the damn slow motion with that too. I mean, what is what is the point of this? What is the point of that? Yeah. Stop killing Matt Riddle, please. Do better, Vince. Yeah. A joke. A joke. Vince McMahon, Bruce Pritchard, you Kentucky Fried Pritchard, y'all all gotta do better. Yeah. Oh, that's enough, man. Yeah. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I didn't really care about this match. I just sat and watched. And then Sheamus is the new United States Championship wrestling. I'm surprised they took the belt off Riddle in one fucking month. That's that. That's what surprised me the most. Yeah. He had like I think three weeks. Like what the hell? <laughs> this is this is how much Matt Riddle Matt Riddle Matt Riddle should be one of them that got released. Cause what the fuck are they doing them dirty like that? For? Mm. Uh, wrestling, Just mad, I gave a four logic a two. What's your scale of this match? I didn't like the fact that they took took it off Riddle soon. I also didn't like the fact that they made Matt Riddle to a comedy guy. But the match was great, and I'm not gonna be too harsh, so I'm giving it a nine out of not a nine point six out of ten. Wow, almost a ten. Okay. Because because that match was that match was technical. It was actually pretty decent for my liking. Yeah. I like because I, because I think Matt Rule is a great wrestler. I think Sheamus is a great wrestler. They probably put one hell of a match I, up I, if, I, if, if given the real opportunity to. You know what? Matt Riddle was actually involved in one of my favorite matches on NXT. Remember that first episode they did on uh, USA and then uh, there was uh, Matt Riddle versus Adam Cole? I really liked that match. Wait, that was on USA? Yeah, that was on USA. The first one they did. I, they they probably did it at one point, but I think it was still on, because I don't watch NXT on on the USA. I because because of commercials, I wait till it goes on the on the WWE Network. Well, now Peacock. So mm -hmm. I think oh. I remember. I think I think I know what you're talking about. That was all, uh, yeah. I remember what you said. Uh, that was a that, I that was a good match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great match. Anyway, for the Intercontinental Championship, we had a Nigerian drum fight between B versus B, the champion versus Apollo Crews. We saw a video package and it wasn't that bad. Mike Rome announced the rules. What rules are they even? Uh, it was literally just a fancy name for a garbage match where they hit each other with kendo sticks and put each other through tables and all that shit i don't i didn't it like was, it no actually i think i i think it it, it there was like green drums and yeah the, it, it was surround it was surrounded by green drums did they even use them no why do you why do you have this but but i think apollo went through the green went through the table and the green drum was on the table what, what, also big e tried big e tried to use the big symbol yeah uh, 
and then uh, Wally, uh, the one of the people who made Biggie's theme song, he came out and performed said song on the stage, and Biggie, the champion, came out first, and Josh wouldn't be happy with this because he doesn't like champions coming out first. And then uh, Apollo Crews came out. They literally yeah. started, and not a minute into the match, they already hitting each other with Kindle sticks, and I, I did not like that at all. I mean, it was so dumb. And then Biggie speared Apollo through the ropes, and that was actually pretty cool. And Apollo hit a Death Valley driver on Biggie. Apollo tried to smash Biggie with the steel steps, but then he evaded. Biggie then hit a choke slam on Apollo on the steel steps, and then I started fast forwarding when they set up tables. And then with the help of Dabakato, Apollo Cruz won the Intercontinental Championship. And I, I, hope gave, you, I hope you heard that, guys. Dabakato. And wrestling i gave a four and logic of two logic of two and then the whole of fame class of 2021 was acknowledged i didn't really care because i didn't i didn't really watch most of these guys i only started watching in august of 2019 i i have watched previously before but i wasn't a full-time fan of wrestling um, I watched been watching it since nineteen ninety eight, so I know I know who all these I know who Rob Van Dam, Eric Bischoff, I know, Eric Bischoff, Molly Holly, Kane, Rick Kane. I don't know who Rich Her Herring is. Uh, who Rich Herring is. Uh, and yes, uh, Ozzy Osbourne, William Shatner, and the fucking and <laughs> Great Khali. Uh, I, 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 uh, Unfortunately, but 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 some of these people they don't they just they don't even deserve to be in the whole thing. The only thing I agree with is Kane, yeah, and Eric Bischoff, because Kane deserve Kane deserves it. He's he's he was part of the great fuse with Undertaker, and uh, uh uh Bischoff made WCW and made the NWO. Yeah. So I, I, so I'll give, I'll give them that. And then we had oh for the Raw Women's Championship, Oscar the Champion versus Rhea Ripley. Get it. A video package played, uh, and then Rhea Ripley came out with Ash Costello performing her theme song. And then Oscar came out. Greg Hamilton announced. You see this? You see my finger? Yeah. Yeah, I pointed up. Yeah, I get a title shot. Fuck out of here, man. Yeah, and then... I pointed at the light right here, get a damn title shot. Get the fuck out of here. It was, it, was, it was a good match, though. I, I do agree with you that it was a bit too soon for Rhea Ripley to, win, to uh, get a title shot, much less win the thing. Because... Uh, what happen, What's going to happen after she loses it? Will they be interested in her anymore after that? We don't know. So, yeah. <clears throat> but this was a good match. Uh, Rhea Ripley worked nicely as a heel. She actually worked really, really well as a heel. Uh, and Asuka did some nice stuff. Uh, Rhea Ripley did this when Oscar was gonna climb on the top turnbuckle, then she ran towards her and drop kicked her and made a fall off the off the turnbuckle. And then another spot where she put her in the electric chair and slammed her face first on the ring apron. And then uh, uh, Rhea Ripley at the end won with a riptide pump handle power palm and she's the new Raw Women's Championship. Wrestling I gave 7.5 and Logic a 7. I give it a... 
and because I didn't because I didn't like the way they 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 book they booked it. Um, I give it a four point five. Oh. Out of 10. Okay. And I mean, then they did have they did have a rematch the next night, but. Um, wanna guess? Wanna wanna guess? Yeah, but wanna guess who ruined it? Charlotte. Charlotte actually looked really nice on that. Get the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> I don't like Charlotte, all right? Yeah. She did admit. She did admit something. She was being a bitch. She didn't. She didn't fucking. She was being careless about other people, and other opportunities for people. But 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 really, get 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 Charlotte Flair the fuck out of here, please. Yeah. And then um no what what happened next? Oh oh this one was good <clears throat> the main event for the Universal Championship Roman Reigns the champion versus Daniel Bryan versus Edge. A video package played and it was really nice. Then Daniel Bryan came out, Edge came out, and Roman Reigns came out. They even uh, recorded him with the 8K cameras, and then uh, this the match was actually very, very, very good. Uh, and there was, was some fun. really you nice. Know, I'm gonna say something right now. I'm actually giving him high praise because I love, I, I, I really, I, I really enjoy Roman's work. That's what a fucking WrestleMania main event should be. Yeah, and they did some really nice stuff. Um, I didn't like when Jey Uso would get involved, and then they took him out early in the match, and then he came back to try and beat Edge, but then Edge speared him, uh, and and Edge uh, uh, did some nice spears. Oh my gosh! Oh, it's just one of the best parts of the match. Fucking, uh, what Roman Reigns ran up to Edge and then gave, oh shit, uh, and then gave him a jumping clothesline, and that looked really good. Uh, and then another part where I, I love when Daniel Bryan does that running knee. It looks so good. It looks so good. And then. When Edge did his spears, it was really nice. And then he also did the concertos, which Randy Orton did to him uh, last year in Jan in February when he came back after his big injury. And and then th this was really really good stuff. I. I I can't believe I didn't like this. I might even watch it again uh, later. Uh, yeah. That's what a main event should be. I give it... Uh, uh, that's what a main event should be. I give it a 10.9 out of 10. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I, I'm going to give this match wrestling 11 and logic an 8. <laughs> This first time I've given a match an 11 out of 10. And that, yeah. friends, is WrestleMania. <laughs> give it up to Roman. But give it up to a 48-year-old fucking edge and give it up Give it up to Daniel fucking Bryan. Well done, guys. Well done, dudes. And that was WrestleMania 37. Romania. So for night two wrestling, I gave a six and logic a four because uh, most of the stuff on night two was not that bad. I uh, was not very good at. I actually like night one much better than night two. Yeah, um, night two uh, felt night. They actually did night. See night two, I feel like just because I think it was just because it was on Peacock. That it was just it was just on Peacock for the fact. That every match he didn't have to fucking rush was all rush. Yeah. And it it didn't feel right to me. Yeah, I'm blowing my nose. Wait. Boy. All right. 
So you want to get out of here now? You want to get out of here now? Okay then. Uh, so I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of Wrestling and Logic. Uh, this was, bro. This was actually not a bad WrestleMania. Um, and oh shit, someone joined. What the hell? No, it's just messages. Uh, and yeah, so then uh, I hope you guys all enjoyed this uh, episode and we will see you in the next one. But until then, this is Carbonate and Ralph Sucker signing out.